25 plagiarized chapters in the Book of Mormon. As we look at the plagiarized chapters in the Book of Mormon, the black text that you see is text that is identical in both the Book of Mormon and the King James Version Bible, plagiarized text. The red text that you see is text that is in the Book of Mormon only and not found in the Bible, and the brown text that you see is text found in the Bible only and not found in the Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon, 1st Nephi, chapter 20, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 48. The most interesting thing I notice about this chapter is what Joseph Smith decided to add to verse 1. God says to, quote, come forth out of the waters of Judah, end quote, and Joseph Smith added to this, quote, or out of the waters of baptism, end quote. Mormonism puts a whole lot of emphasis on baptism and teaches that water baptism is essential for salvation, though the Bible teaches it is just a testimony to the world of what God has done for us in saving us. If you carefully compare the Bible with the Book of Mormon looking at the plagiarized chapters, you will notice that most of the time any changes made to the Book of Mormon text are just trivial changes but sometimes there are some serious alterations to what God was saying in the Bible. Book of Mormon, 1st Nephi, chapter 21, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 49. Joseph Smith seemed to have a real hatred for pastors, and that shows up here, I believe. In the first verse of his plagiarism from Isaiah 49, he just adds in a paragraph at the beginning that says, And again, hearken, O ye house of Israel, all ye that are broken off and are driven out because of the wickedness of the pastors of my people. Yea, all ye that are broken off, that are scattered abroad, who are of my people, O house of Israel. Before 1990, in the Mormon temple ceremony, they had a part of the ceremony where Christian preachers were basically mocked and portrayed to be ministers hired by and working for Satan to keep people away from the quote-unquote truth of Mormonism. Their interest in working for Satan was to make money, supposedly. It is interesting to me just how money-hungry the Mormon church is. I don't know of any Christian church that does a tithing settlement with the leader of the church, harassing or questioning each member once a year, to make sure they are giving at least a tenth of what they make to the church. Jesus said our giving was to be in secret and not even carefully watched by ourselves, and he said that God who sees in secret would reward us openly. The Mormon Church also has many other ways to collect money, which include building funds, missionary funds, and fast offerings, to name just a few. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 7, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 50. I believe that the most interesting thing about this chapter is what Joseph Smith chose to leave out. The last part of verse 10 in the Bible says, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. I wonder why Joseph Smith would want to leave this out. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 8, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah chapter 51 through 52, verse 2. Once again in this passage, the most interesting thing is what was left out. In Isaiah chapter 51, verse 15, God identifies himself as the one who, quote, divided the sea. Joseph Smith left out the words that divided the sea, probably because the God he believed in was not big enough to do something like that. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 12, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 2. Isaiah, chapter 2, is one of the most interesting plagiarisms in the Book of Mormon, because it directly contradicts the Bible and creates a serious problem in the Book of Mormon. Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 in the Bible say, quote, 
their land also is full of idols they worship the work of their own hands that which their own fingers have made and the mean man boweth down and the great man humbleth himself therefore forgive them not end quote. in the book of mormon this passage says quote, their land is also full of idols they worship the work of their own hands that which their own fingers have made and the mean man boweth not down and the great man humbleth himself not therefore forgive him not end quote. The Bible talks of men worshipping idols, and that is why they are not forgiven. And the Book of Mormon talks of the mean man and the great man not bowing down to idols, and because they are not bowing down and worshipping idols, they are not to be forgiven. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 13, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 3. Much of the plagiarism in the Book of Mormon to me looks almost like how I did reports in elementary school. I would find the topic I was to do a report on in an encyclopedia, and then I would basically copy the article on that topic onto paper for my report. If there were words or things I didn't understand or wouldn't normally use, then I would leave them out or change them slightly to words that I would use, to describe the subject. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 14, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 4. I have to wonder if Joseph Smith didn't copy this chapter into the Book of Mormon because he found a way to justify his unfaithfulness to his wife, possibly, by twisting verse 1. His ideas for polygamy were probably also beginning and he was probably finding a way to justify them with this passage. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, chapter 15, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah, chapter 5. I am certainly not attempting to address every problem in these chapters that we are looking at. I believe there are many things that could be found if a person took the time to carefully compare the word changes that Joseph Smith made while plagiarizing these chapters from the Bible into the Book of Mormon. Perhaps this video will make that easier for someone to do in the future. I am just trying to point out a few of the serious problems that I have seen or do see in a quick scan of these chapters. I am sure I have missed many and maybe most of the problems and errors Joseph Smith created by tampering with the Word of God. After all, the Bible does give us quite a warning against that in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6, which say, Every word of God is pure, he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi chapter 18, plagiarized from the King James Version Bible, Isaiah chapter 8. There is another serious problem in this chapter in just two words that Joseph Smith decided to add to the Word of God. The Bible is very clear that we are not to try to communicate with the dead or have anything to do with familiar spirits, demons masquerading as the dead. We look to God. Dead people can do nothing for us, and we can do nothing for the dead. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19, Joseph Smith adds two words which totally alter what the Bible is saying. To read the Book of Mormon alteration, you would think that God wants people to communicate with the dead, which is exactly the opposite of what the Bible is saying. 